Hi, hello, welcome back. My name is Devaraj, and welcome back to this ongoing series about Reikian character structure, Reikian characterology, Reikian character analysis or character type, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this week we're going to be looking at the last one of the rigid subtypes, or certainly the last one that I'm going to cover in this series, uh, calling it number 3.4, and that is the masculine aggressive female. Fairly rare subtype, I would say. But interesting and kind of instructive, one of the great things about characterology and about the different characters that I find is that, you know, that learning a bit about each one that Reich identified or that came along a little bit later, you start to also understand, you know, a lot more about how character analysis really fits together, you know, really fits together. So even if, you know, you're looking at this series and think, oh, I'm not very interested in that one. I would recommend you just to give it a listen if you're interested in character structure, because you can learn a lot from each one, even if it doesn't remotely apply to you. That's certainly been my experience. So just to give a little background knowledge about the masculine aggressive uh, female, let's get my little thing running here so I can see what's going on. Sorry. A little bit of background knowledge, because... Something that you can take from this whole series is an understanding of the significance in psychology and in your life of egoic strength, the strength of your ego, what was known originally in Freudian psychology as aggression. And this usage of the word aggression is not the same as, you know, when we use it out in the world, think of someone being aggressive in some way. It simply refers to the degree to which you personally have confidence and ability to move from where you are towards something you want, or towards getting your needs met. And similarly to hold, you know, a clear boundary with the world where there's something where you need to hold your boundaries, basically. And our level of egoic strength or aggression is largely determined by the level of pregenital wounding. And pregenital refers to, again, Freudian psychology and one strand of it, which essentially the genital phases commence at around 12 to 18 months in the average infant, the average newborn child. And trauma or you know heavy conditioning, which comes in at that time, has a disproportionately large effect on the child and how it grows. It's rather like, you know, if you're growing a tree, you've got your tree, you've got a little tree growing just like that, and someone comes along and whacks a big chunk out of it very early on in its life, that will affect the whole, you know, the tree survives, and continues to grow, but that will affect it hugely. And these, this, this pregenital wounding is very, very important in, in uh, Reikian psychology and, and essentially in life, really. Wounds that have happened from conception to around the age of 12 to 18 months have a very, very powerful effect on us. And what we were seeing earlier on in this series with the orals and the endurers you know, they have a very high kind of overwhelming level of pregenital wounding. You know, in the case of the oral, the ego was essentially crippled or crippled, basically crippled by an absence, someone not there, you know, crippled their ability to really have an ego and to move out from their own center. They tend to go into the world kind of just collapsed, just desperately hoping that someone gives them what they need. Or in the case of the endurer, their ego was crushed in the early stages of life. Often the mother, a very dominating mother, who demands that the little baby uh, only defecates, only has a crap at certain times, or that it only eats at certain times and is very, very strong. These kind of, or just in any other way, really controlling in the first year, may so crush you know, the young child's ego that he, he, he or she becomes like this tree that grows, but it's been completely damaged in the early phases of its life. Now, what we're seeing with these, the last two rigid subtypes, which means the passive feminine male and this week's one, the masculine aggressive female, are characters, are character types that have been cre created by a mixture of pregenital and genital wounding. You know, they've had an invasion or a withdrawal wound in very early childhood, the pregenital phase. And then there's been more wounding that's come in after that, you know, in the genital phase, maybe age two, three, four, five more stuff has gone on. And the genital wound, the pregenital wound has not been so deep as to completely kind of crush them or cripple them, but it has left its own traumatic impact on them. And then this other wound comes in, and this is what's created their distinctive character structure. We saw this last week 
with uh, with V or ten days ago or so, whatever I did V passive feminine man, and it's the same with a masculine aggressive female. It's simply that, as we shall see, you know that when you look at wounds that occur during this uh, genital phase and onwards, they 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 have quite a different effect on young boys as they do on young girls, basically. And uh, with this character, the masculine aggressive, in fact. Their, their pregenital wound will be an aggressive wound, will be, sorry, rather a, an invasion wound of some type. So their underlying personality type is an endurer, but they are not fully an endurer. They haven't had their ego crushed, merely it's been given quite a strong whack. So having kind of done this little bit of background knowledge, then appearance and behaviour of this character type. So th th these are women, basically these are women, and they will have masculine features. They may have above average body hair on the face and legs. They will have more developed musculature than the average woman and quite a set, determined jaw. They're likely to be highly competitive, especially towards men. They may be overtly sexual, but they will only be using sexuality to gain power, not through sexual desire itself. And they will likely struggle to really enjoy sex. They will be strongly head-centred, you know, they are thinking and manipulating, plotting, looking for things all the time. And their inner world tends to be dominated by a lot of anxiety. But they don't really collapse with the anxiety or, in a sense, be just hurled about all the time. It's like they, they will feed more on the kind of adrenal buzz of the anxiety. In their psychology, let's again, it's a, to understand this character type, it's important to recognise the difference between men and women in very early infancy. And there's a little table. By the way, I forgot to mention, but I'm starting to put on my website write-ups of these character types. So if you would like to see those, you know, go on to bioenergetics.org.uk and uh, look under Info Learning, and you'll find them there, some posts, uh, one for each one. And uh, I mention that because there's a table here, uh, which I'm not going to show you, so uh, I'll just explain it. But essentially, it's contrasting the developing male and the developing female in different ways from the, the pregenital and the genital phase. So in the pregenital phase, uh, small, small male children, their attention is directed towards the mother. Because you come out of a mother, your attention mostly in the first 12 to 18 months is directed towards the mother. And the charge that becomes sexuality is located in the penis. Basically, simple as that. And when you hit the genital phase at around 12 to 18 months, this charge in the, in the penis increases, you know, increases. You get more pleasure out of stimulating this area as, a, as an infant. And your attention remains directed towards the mother, towards because she's the opposite gender. And with women, quite different stuff happens. There's little infants, little infant girls. Yes, in the pregenital phase, their direction, their attention is directed towards the mother because they came out of a mother. They came out of a mother, same as the little boys. And sexually, their energy is in the clitoris, is in the clitoris, outside the vagina. And when the genital phase comes in at around 12, 15, 18 months, their attention starts to shift towards men, towards the father, towards brothers, towards any other males around. And their sexuality, the charge, the, the charge of energy moves from the clitoris into the vagina. And this movement is very, very important in bioenergetics because for women, it's basically from there, they will develop to be really a woman, really a woman. All the features and psychology of really a woman. And so, you know, what's important to notice in this is that with guys, you know, as they're, they're developing from the pregenital into the genital phase in very early infancy, their attention remains directed towards the mother and their, their, their energy builds in their penis, but it's not moving anywhere else. It's not moving anywhere else. But for women, it's considerably different. The energy should shift into the vagina, which becomes increasingly this receptive organ of the body, the female body. And their attention starts to shift towards the father, starts to shift towards the father. And what you will usually see in the history of this character, uh, there will have been quite a lot of rejection of this infant sexuality going on. There's already been some form of invasion wound that's happened, uh, some extremely controlling parent a little bit earlier on. But then there's a kind of rejection of her infant sexuality, usually from the father or others, because, you know, men don't know how to cope with a little girl who's, who's, who's got a certain level of sexual, uh, sexual attention directed towards them. And, you know, it may well be that the father often only gave attention or love to the little girl 
as a reward for some kind of endeavor, you know, uh, not in appreciation of her femininity in any way. He may have been wanting a boy, he may have been wanting a boy, something like that. And what happens in this is that the charge that should be moving into the vagina from the clit tends to not move, tends to not move. It doesn't become, the vagina does not become adequately charged to really give a full onset of the feminine development, basically. And what also tends to happen, as is with uh, the passive feminine male, who has been through a similar process, but because he's a boy and the, and the way that uh, we do, the way that men develop in the in the pre -gen and the, gen the genital phase is different, he's become super passive. He's afraid to come out and actually move forwards. You know, he's terrified. He's got enough egoic strength not to move back and to fall back and collapse like an oral or just get into mindless kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, provocation like the endurer, but he doesn't have the energy to move forwards. He's been bashed by the father in the, in the genital phase. And, with, and, and also, his energy has come up into the head a lot, up into the head. And this is exactly the same what happens here with this character, 3.4, the masculine, aggressive female. And so the head and the neck and the shoulders become very set and rigid. They become set and rigid. And, you know, she starts to feel more masculine. The, the energy in the clitoris will feel more masculine. They will lack this receptive feeling inside. And from here, you know, through the years, more masculine development takes place. Of course, the masculine aggressive woman is still female, you know, but physically and psychologically, you know, they, they do change towards the masculine. Stronger arms, abdomen, musculature generally, perhaps increased body hair, a driven and competitive attitude. This will be very strong and particularly a desire to, to beat other men. As we mentioned, her sexuality will be seen as simply a tool to attract men or, or women if she becomes lesbian. And just, you know, it's, it's, it's like a control thing. It's not, really, it's not really about sexual pleasure so much. Sexuality is more a power game for someone from this category. Though they may fantasize about finding someone strong enough for them to surrender to, because they do also have a strong masochistic side. Because of a lack of char charge in the vagina itself, orgasms are usually clitoral for this kind of woman. And so they're a bit superficial. They don't have the, the depth of release. If you're interested more in this stuff, you know, you can read Reich's The Function of the Orgasm, where he explains a lot the kind of psychological and all the benefits that having a full deep body orgasm has. You know, and for a woman, this is a vaginal organ or orgasm. Therapy. So in therapy, you know, Characters like this are not often coming to therapy. You know, it's the same with most of the other rigids generally. They're not so interested. You know, they've got they've got egoic strength to kind of survive in the world, but they can't really get a lot of pleasure out of life. They can't really get a lot of pleasure out of life. But all of the rigids, you know, they've got a bit of egoic strength. They can get out there in the world. And what's important to them usually is they don't really want to, particularly the first two, the phallic narcissist male and the uh, uh, so-called hysteric female, you know, they, they like to keep appearances up. It's very, very important for them. So going to therapy, they'd have to have a lot of subterfuge to make sure no one found out they were going to therapy because it would it would diminish their, their status as they see it in their head. And with these two, and, and with the uh, passive feminine male and the uh, masculine aggressive woman, they're a bit similar. They're a bit similar. But they do have considerable weakness, particularly the kind of energetically in the lower part of their body. So they may come for, they may come for therapy. They may come, but it's, it's not so, it's not so likely, you know, you'll see a lot of orals and endurers in therapy and also as we'll see the dreamer the schizoids. Something they'll certainly need to learn is the value of femininity, you know, to really understand that something is missing in, the, in, in, in them and, you know, start to develop it mentally can support them to develop, you know, receptive qualities, receptive qualities, not always having to be in control, not always batting things back to someone, but how to be able to receive it can be useful to express anger against the father because the wounding probably did in the genital phase come from the father. Uh, there may be tantric exercises that they can do like de-armoring techniques to move energy from the clitoris into the vagina, bring more stimulation there. You know, they can be really like muscular blocks in that area of the body of the woman. And also, you know, as is the, as is the case with pretty much all the character types, strengthening the legs 
and you know the whole grounding circuit from the belly through the hips pelvis legs and feet down to the soles of the feet the more energy you can get in that circuit the easier it is for the upper body to relax and for more awareness to come back into the body so those are the basic uh yeah that's the basic some of the the basic roots in therapy okay so that's the masculine aggressive female i'm not going to do any more rigid subtypes there have been at least one more that i've heard suggested but I'm going to, we'll be concluding this series with two more, which is number four, the uh, dreamer, or formerly called schizoid, formerly known as schizoid, and number five, the influencer, formerly known as the psychopath, particularly uh, intriguing character for several reasons, which we'll go into when we get there. Um, so that's this, that's um, the, this Reichian character type 3.4, the masculine aggressive female. If you're interested in this work, check out bioenergetics.org.uk, where there's the online course and also some written articles on this kind of material. I'm putting more up. So uh, there's one or two up right now. I'm putting a few more up in the next few days. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in and uh, feel free to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I will speak to you later.